Good evening, people. I almost said good morning. But come on in. We're going to go ahead and get started here in just a moment. Happy New Year to you, cousin. I have a word and it's going to be, hey, half paint. I hope you're doing well, Tina. I got to catch people before they start getting out. And that's why we always come on about 6.30 or 7. There is nothing wrong with hearing a word of inspiration, a word of encouragement, a word from God to um, take you over into the new year. There's nothing wrong with it. Hey, Kiki. Yeah. I am not beyond hearing the word. Come on, people. Let's get it. I want to talk about shedding layers. We're going to shed some layers here in just a moment. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I just want to be light for the flight. So I got some layers I need to shed. We all have some. And um, I don't think I'm going to wait around. Anybody who wants to hear the live, they, they know where to find it. And um, I want to go ahead and say say this before we hop hop into the message that, yes, we are having church in the morning. We are having church in the morning in the building. Uh, I'm not going to let uh, New Year's Eve dictate um, my commitment to God. I want to be there live in person, uh, thanking God that he enabled us to see another day. That, that's the least we can do. I'm not going to, oh, it's New Year's Eve and I'm just, no, nah, yeah, I'm going to have a great time with my family. But at the end of the day, um, I know that I've been in some circumstances that my family couldn't help me out of, you know. So uh, my obligation and my allegiance is not just to my family. First and foremost, it's to God, who is the head of all of our lives, as my dad would say. Okay. And so we're going to uh, go into prayer. We're going to have a word of prayer. Um, if you have any specific prayer requests, uh, feel free to drop those prayer requests in the comments. And even if we don't get all of your prayers tonight uh, in this live, we will definitely go back and read the, um, <clears throat> the comments and we will be praying for you. OK, we we are we're trying to shed some layers going into 2023. I don't want no extra baggage that I don't have to have. I'm trying to be as light as I can so that I can run the race that God has set before me. And when you're in your lane running your race, um, I can guarantee you that you will experience God's blessings on your life in ways that you could never even have imagined. So um and some people play with it. They don't believe it. They don't they don't stand on it. And that's why so many people struggle today, because we stop trusting God. We stop trusting God. And and listen to me. This is not the season to abandon the God who's always been there for you. I just want to go ahead and put that out there. This is not the season, because if you notice things are getting worse and worse the way the scripture predicted that they would. It said that men would wax worse and worse. I don't even see how people can go clubbing tonight. You know, um, th there was a time where you could go clubbing and actually have a good time around people. But you don't know if a, a, a shootout is going to happen these days. You don't know if people beefing with somebody that's standing next to you. You know, so just whatever you choose to do, you're grown. But please be careful. And before you leave your house tonight, make sure you pray and ask God to cover you. Ask him to cover you. Okay. All right, so so let's pray and we're going to hop right on into this thing. Uh, Father, we come to you today, first and foremost, thanking you for bringing us to the end of 2022. We thank you for the grace that you have given us all year long, 
So many people thought that they would sink in certain situations, God, that you allowed them to push, propel, and to even prevail through. And so we give you honor for that. We honor you not just because of what you've done for us. We honor you just because of who you are. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. We come to give homage, to pay homage to you and to honor you today uh, for all the work that you have done throughout this year on our behalf. Uh, work that we didn't even deserve, you know, blessings that we didn't even deserve, uh, elevation that we didn't even deserve, but you did it because of your own faithfulness. The scripture declares that even when we are unfaithful, you remain faithful. So many parents buried children this year. So many people lost loved ones, God, but the fact that we are still on top of the ground and the ground is not on top of us it, it, it just goes to show how merciful and how good you are. The scripture says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And we do declare that you are good. And it's not just it's not cliche. It's not a cliche. It is the honest truth. Uh, and we just thank you for being good to us. Even on our worst days, you have still uh, been good to us and you are worthy to be praised, to be adored, to be magnified, to be praised. And we know that you inhabit the praises of your people. So we're praying right now because we know that so many people had struggles in 2022. Uh, yes, we did have a lot of fun. Yes, we did joke a lot. Yes, we did have ups and downs. We had our fair share of issues. Uh, but Lord, we thank you for the ability to still praise you in spite of what we've been through. And so, God, we we just want you to know that we love you because you first loved us. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us with a, a reasonable portion of our health and strength. We thank you, God, for not allowing the ditches that it may have been dug for us to uh, to drown us or to kill us. Uh, you actually allowed us to walk on top of many things that were designed to take us out. So we're just taking this moment to say thank you. And we don't take these moments for granted, Lord, because we do understand that life is a vapor. We are here one moment and can be gone the same moment. And so we honor you today when we ask that you would continue to protect us, our children, our families, our loved ones, those who will be out and about tonight just trying to enjoy their lives. God, we just pray that you will be with all of us, God. We pray, and I know that that this prayer, is. I'm gonna be very specific about it, Lord. I pray that no one dies in our city, and I pray that no one puts themselves in a position or a situation uh, for their lives to be taken. And so I'm just asking God for grace to be granted even for those who don't pray, even for those who don't go to church, even for those who don't know you. I'm praying for those individuals, God, who don't even understand how much they need you. I'm praying, uh, Lord, that you would bring them to the, a realization uh, that they do need you and they need you now. We all need you. As a matter of fact, God, we can't live without you. The scripture says that it is in you that we live, move, and have our very existence. And I didn't mean this to be a lengthy prayer, but you've been good to us 365 days in this year. And so a few moments of prayer, God, is the least that we could render unto you. I pray for every pastor who has labored in this vineyard, uh, who has undergone stress, trauma, and so many uh, changes that your your preachers had to adjust to God. And so many uh, times we don't understand the press, the pressure and the and that comes with the position. Uh, but I'm just asking that you would elevate all of your your heralds, God, those who will herald the truth, preach the gospel and stand on the unadulterated word of God. I pray that you would give them strength to just keep on pushing for another season. Uh, Lord, I pray for pastors' wives because they undergo stress and trauma and pain and everything else that even the pastors go through. Maybe not to the same extent, but they do feel the pressure. And I pray uh, that you would touch every uh, pastor's wife, um, every pastor's child, uh, their families, and 
and all the parishioners, God, all over the land. We pray for anyone in leadership, those who are working with our children and those who are uh, uh, rolling their sleeves up in the city, uh, doing so much work, Lord, to try to make our community a better place. I pray in the mighty name of your son that you would uh, help them to continue to do the good work that you call them to and to not grow weary in well-doing for in due season they will reap a harvest if they don't grow weary or give up. And so once again, we magnify you. We lift you up today. We say that we love you. We thank you for all you've done. We don't take nothing for granted. I believe that doors are going to open this season for people who are in position and those who have already walked through open doors. They're going to be conduits that open doors for others. And so as we climb higher and elevate God, help us to never forget the reason why we were able to elevate and help us to also understand the law of gravity. You know, what goes up must come down at some point. So as we do come down, God, I pray that we come down passing the torch to somebody else to be elevated and to go even further than we have. We love you once again, and we thank you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, hello to everyone. Um, I want to talk just for a brief moment, and I only have three points. Um, I'm not going to give it all tonight because I know that in the morning I have to be back at it again. And I just want to talk briefly about asking uh, about stripping, about shedding layers, shedding layers. That's that's all I want to talk about, um, because as we ask God to help us shed some of these layers that we've that have been put on us and that we've taken on in 2022, uh, these layers must come off. It is imperative that these layers come off because there are some other things that God wants to place up on us in 2023. And if we don't shed those layers now, it's going to hinder what God wants to do for us in 2023. Now, I'm going to say this and I mean it when I say it. Uh, I want to experience my best life and I don't want to wait forever to, to experience it. And the reason why I want to experience my best life is because times are very tough right now. When the Bible says that in the last days, the, you know, that perilous times will come. I need you to understand that we are living in perilous times. You know, so if you're going to fulfill uh, God's mission and vision for your life, this is the time to do it. If you're going to ever become anything or go after your dreams and pursue uh, whatever business endeavors you might have, this is the time to do it. You know, whatever you have planned or whatever you have spoken with God about that you want to do, this is the season to do it. But before you can step into something new, you must shed the old stuff. You must shed the old stuff. So we want to talk about shedding layers because as you begin to shed layers, it prepares you for takeoff. Let me say it again. I'm going to reiterate it. As you begin to shed layers, unnecessary layers, let me say it that way. As you begin to shed these layers, God prepares you for takeoff because in order for anything to go up, all of those layers and the trauma and the baggage must go. And I know that sometimes we think that the baggage that we have, because it makes us feel good, that it's good for us. Some, sometimes you got to be like, look, you know, that was good while it lasted, you know, but I'm on something else, you know, and because I'm on something else, I can't keep this because as long as I keep this, I know that it's going to hinder this right here. And you know what? I'm not going to keep sacrificing this for that right there. I can't keep sacrificing because because it, it doesn't add up this is right here is going to propel me and it's going to push me and it's going to elevate me to where I need to be. This right here is going to continue to take from me. And so also in the morning, I need you to, to, to hear me that I'm going to talk about the difference between um, between connections and attachments. That's what I'm going to speak on in the morning because it's going to be very imperative, important for you to understand the difference between the two. We all have had too many attachments not understanding that attachments only take from you and connections they take, but they also give. 
you know, so I need what I do in 2023 to be re reciprocated because all those other years I was the giver. And because I was the only one giving, I was the only one in the negative at the end of the year. And so my New Year's resolution every year was to do better, but I couldn't do better as long as I had the wrong attachment. OK, so we'll talk about that more in the morning. Let's talk about shedding layers. So in order to shed these layers, I'm going to give you three points. Let me give you the first one. The first thing we need to do is to ask God to strip us. We need to ask God to strip us and hold on. You know, I, before you ask God to strip you, I need you to understand that when you ask him to strip you, uh, what you're asking him to do is to remove the things that are detrimental to your future. OK, I need you to understand when, when you say, Lord, I need you to strip me. You're not telling him to take everything away from you. But what you're asking him is, is to take those things away from you. That's going to hinder where you're going. OK, and sometimes the reason we have to ask God to take these things or to remove these things for us, because we're not always strong enough to do it on our own. OK, so so God does specialize in being our paraclete. A paraclete is one who comes along beside you and help you to get from point A to B. God is your paraclete. He comes along beside you and he helps you to do the things that you cannot do on your own. That's why we thank God for the Holy Spirit. He is our helper and he is our keeper. So we're asking God to strip us, strip us of what? Dead weight. I need somebody to type it in dead weight. Lord, I need you to strip me of dead weight. Now, some weight is good. OK, you need some weight. And all of us know that if you've been sick or if you've been lacking in weight, a little weight looks good on you. So all weight isn't bad weight. But what I'm asking God to do is strip the weight away from me that I don't need. OK, OK. Um, listen to this. When I stayed in the projects, um, I don't know if my mother was the only one to do this, but what my mother would do is that she would go buy some lye and she would strip the floors in the projects uh, before she waxed them because she always waxed those floors in Alton Park, you know, but but before she waxed them, she was strip like, you know, yeah, she going through the whole place with lies, stripping all the old stuff up. And I didn't understand what she was doing at that moment. But as I have gotten older, I understand what she was doing. She was getting ready to put a whole new coat on the floor, a whole new coat of wax on the floor. But before she could put that new wax on the floor, she wanted to get the old stuff up. So in order for her to do that, she had to put something on the floor that was strong enough to remove all the old stuff. And so that's why I said we get God involved because God is strong enough to remove all the old stuff to prepare you for the new stuff. Paul says this in Philippians, forget those things that are behind you and press toward the mark of the high call that God has placed on your life. Your life is as you begin to look forward, you have a better life ahead of you than you do reflecting on what you've lost. Because if you lost it, it was never meant for you to keep it. If they left, they were never meant to stay. And so in 2023, I only want what God wants for me. Come on, get that in your head. Get that in your heart. I only I'm not forcing anything in 2023. Is anybody with me in the live? I'm not forcing anything. Tell yourself that I'm not forcing no relationships. I'm not forcing no type of none of that. I'm not forcing nothing. If you don't want me around and I discern that I move on. But when I move on this year, I'm not going to move on mad. Because a lot of times you got to learn how to accept the fact that everybody don't, don't want you around. And just because they don't want you around or just because they don't want you to fit in with them and just because they don't accept you doesn't mean that you need to reciprocate the same type of energy that they're giving you. I, I just understand where you are and, and I, I, I get that. I got to learn how to accept the fact that everybody don't like me. Come on, somebody. You got to be able to handle that. 
You got to ask God to give you tough skin in 2023 to accept the fact that everybody doesn't want you around. You're not everybody's type. You're not everybody's kind. Everybody ain't checking for you. You handsome, you you cute, you all that, you know, but everybody don't think that about you. And you just got to be OK with that. People have their opinions and you got to let them express their opinions. But don't allow their opinions to shape the person that you're trying to become. Hebrews 12 says this and Hebrews 12 verses one and two. It says this is what Paul says. He says, therefore, well, I say Paul is the writer. Some people debate about the writer in Hebrews because he's never identified. Let me just go ahead and put that out there. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, listen to what he says. Let us also lay aside every encumbrance and sin which so easily entangles us. Okay. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Okay. So as you're getting light for the flight in 2023, Uh, The writer is saying that anything that's weighing you down, you need to get it up off of you. Everything is not your responsibility. Every person is not your responsibility. You've taken on some things in 2022 that you didn't have to take on, but because you took it on, it weighed you down. Now, you know that it's a bad thing when you go to help somebody and you end up being the person who needs help after helping them. You are traumatized. From assisting the next person. Lord have mercy. What the writer of Hebrews is saying here, he's saying that it doesn't have to be a sin to be a weight. Something can be heavy and weighing you down, but not necessarily called sin. Okay, understand that just because something is heavy doesn't mean that it's sin. You could you could do something and it not be wrong, but you could have did something else. What you did put you in a rut, but it's not called sin. It's called a weight. You helped somebody to your own detriment. It wasn't a sin, but it became a weight. You always showed up for everybody who called you. It wasn't a sin, but it became a weight. Why? Because it started taking your attention off of what God called you to. And I need you to understand that it's okay to to know that God did not call you to everybody. He didn't call you to everybody. No, everybody is not your responsibility. So it doesn't have to be sin to be a weight. And let me tell you something about a weight. A weight takes away from the distance and the endurance that you could go. (laughs) That's why you don't want to keep a weight. If you know a person running track, they're not running running track in jeans. They're not running track in Timberland boots. They're not running track with hats on and coats and book bags and, and, and pouches. They're not running track with none of that because they understand the art of track and field, the art of racing, the art of running a relay. It means that you get as light as you can. That's why they wear those shoes and those little shorts and and all that stuff, because you know what they're trying to be. If they could, they would probably run naked. But since they have to have on clothes, they want the lightest clothing that they could possibly wear. And so they put on their track and field clothes and they run till they get through the finish line. And that's what God is saying to all of us. He's saying that there's a race for you to run, but in order for you to run your race effectively, you got to make sure that you get the monkey off your back. You got to make sure that that you're in alignment with my will for your life and not just what people expect from you. Because let me tell you something. Hear me out. People will put an expectation up on your life that will wear you out. Something that God never called you to. Something that God never gave you the okay to do. But people are going to say, yeah, come on. Yo, you, you need to be over here. You should be doing this. You should be helping me. No, if God didn't call you to it, 
you, in 2023, you got to learn the art of saying no. If they get mad at you for your no, then it's their problem and not yours. You got to learn how to be disliked. If I'm going to be disliked because I told you, no, you really didn't like me anyway. You just want to use me. And in 2023, I'm not about to let people use me up because I have people. And it, it, listen, and it's sad when people who really don't like you use you up. If I'm going to be used, I would rather be used by somebody who loves me. And when they get on their feet, they'll reciprocate what I've done. They'll give back and they'll be there for me when I need them. Tired of helping selfish people whose only agenda is to capitalize on somebody else's hard work, to capitalize on somebody else's efforts, to capitalize and to take, take, take. And they never, ever have anything to give. And it's never a good day for them. Never a good day. I don't want to be around people who say they know God and love God, but they never have a good day. On my worst day, I can say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it because I'm going to take that type of authority over my life and especially over my day. You know, I know that people get sick in their body. You know, they, they struggle, you know, but but why walk around? And keep promoting that all the time. If you're sick, don't make yourself sicker by reiterating the fact that you're sick. I mean, by his stripes, you are healed. You, there's so many scriptures that you can quote. So many things that God has said about you. The Lord is my shepherd. You know, you can just go on and on and on. There's so many positive affirmations that you could stand on. If you are already sick, you don't have to keep telling people because guess what? They're going to know anyway. I mean, once you tell them, they know you're sick, you know, but guess what? I believe that God is healing me, even though I might be sick in my body, even though I might be going through some physical and financial and emotional God is healing me right now. That's what I'm going to declare because I'm trusting him with my future. And so I'm speaking those things that are not as if they are because I have the power of life and death in my own tongue, according to the word of God. So a weight takes away from the distance and the endurance that you could go. So if you remove the weight, you can go further. You can go harder. You can go smarter. But you got to get that weight up off of you. OK. And also a weight hinders your ability to compete. This world is a very competitive world. I'm talking about on your job. There's going to be competition. There's competition in people's churches. There's competition on social media. There's competition everywhere you go. There is competition. You know, there is no way of avoiding the fact that this world is a very competitive world. And it's people out here that's going to give you a run for your money. But you can never put your best foot forward as long as you allow people to put weight up on your life. You know, because sometimes they will put stuff on you that you never asked for, but you never denied it. If that makes sense to you. Because if I got weight on me and I see that you don't have any weight on you, then I have a tendency to come to you wanting you to help bear my burden. But since you didn't have no weight on you, I'm going to just dump it all on you. And people will dump their weight on you because they feel that you don't have none. Oh, she can handle it. Oh, he can handle it. Th their life is good. They don't have any struggles, so they don't mind dumping it on you. But listen to me. You can love God, be saved and all that and still say, "Uh, uh no, you're not putting that on me. No, I, I came to help you not to take it up off you because I didn't die for your sins. I didn't I didn't hang on no cross. I didn't I didn't do none of that. I didn't raise for you on the third day. Put your weight on the one who died for you. Now, I don't mind assisting you, but I promise he didn't put me here to take it. Because if he put me here to take it, then there would have been no need for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. 
So uh, a weight hinders your ability to compete. Let me give you this one. A weight will sink you if you keep it too long. <laughs> Listen to me, people. And I'm trying to make this as simple and as plain as possible because we're going into 2023. Uh, you know, if it be God's will. And I promise you, I ain't trying to hold somebody's weight for too long. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to do that because if you keep it long enough, that weight will sink you to the pavement. OK, so so when you are assisting people, know when to shift it. Now, I don't mind holding this for you for a minute. I'm a, I'm a hold this for you for a minute, but it, it's getting heavy. It's getting heavy and this ain't even mine in the first place. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shift this back to you. Hopefully uh, you got some strength and you've been revived and you've been resuscitated and you, you know, but I'm, I'm about to give you your burden back and you take it to God because I am not him. I'm not God. OK, so let's move on. So ask God to strip you. Next point. Ask God to help you run your own race. Oh, ask him to help you run your own race. Look at the latter part of Hebrews 12, uh, verse two. It says, um, and let us run with endurance the race set before us. You can't run your race in somebody else's lane. Lord, help me. You cannot run effectively nor with endurance the race set before you if you are running in somebody else's lane. If you're running a real race, you will be disqualified if you get in another runner's lane. Because you running in somebody else's lane is hazardous for the person whose lane it is as well as yourself. So in essence, you got to learn how to stay in your own lane. And I know this is going to hurt when I say it, but I got to say it anyway. And mind your own business. Whew. When I was younger, I was I was way worse than this. Let me tell you, I would tell you like it is step on your toes. And I, as I got older, I started being a little bit more merciful. But but let me tell you, you got to mind your own business. Keep your mouth off of other people's names and keep your mouth out of other people's business. If it doesn't affect you personally, and even if it does affect you personally, it does not mean you always have to speak on it. You got to learn how to close your mouth so God can bless you. Woo. Let me tell you what Proverbs says. In verse 26, verse 17, it says um, interfering. This is what the what the word says. It's right here. Interfering in someone else's argument is as foolish as yanking a dog's ears. Proverbs 26, verse 17. If it's not your argument. Keep your mouth closed. Mm mm mm. If it's not, if it's not your battle to fight, just kindly refrain from it. I had to learn that my own self in 2022. Some things we just don't need to say. Sometimes you got to mind your own personal business and stay out of it. And that's that's why he says run your race. Run the race that God has set before you and keep your eyes on your lane, because the moment you cross into somebody else's lane, it's going to be some commotion. It's going to be a problem. And the ref, the judges will disqualify you. OK, so Proverbs 26, 17, I'm going to read it to you again. I need you to jot this down. It says interfering in someone else's argument is as foolish as yanking a dog's ear. <laughs> so what so what the writer uh, who is Solomon, what he's saying in so many words is, is that, man, mind your business, mind your business. 
And you can't get mad if somebody tell you to like mind your business respectfully. You know what I'm saying? Like, and sometimes we all do jump the gun and, and get out of hand and get out of control. And we be sitting back looking crazy at the end of it, you know, but we, that's why we got to read our word more because, um, if Proverbs 27 tells you, you know what happens when you yank a dog's ear? What do you think is going to happen to you if you pull? That's one of the most sensitive parts of a dog is, is their ear. And if you pull a dog's ear, even if it has never bitten a person before, and even if it's not a vicious dog, if you pull that dog by its ear, it's going to try to dismantle. It's going to bite you, in other words. And so let me give you another verse. Proverbs 26, 20 and 21 says this. Where there is no wood, a fire goes out. And where there is no gossip, contention cease. And so sometimes we get caught up in fires. OK, we, we're beefing with people. We having issues. We're going back and forth. But the writer here says, if you don't put any wood in it, that fire is going to go out. But you know what? Some people specialize in wood chopping and they keep on adding wood and they keep on uh, putting chips in it and they keep on putting lighter fluid in it. They put everything because they like drama. They love drama. And so what they're going to do is keep the fire going when the when the word simply says that if you don't put any wood in it, the fire goes out. And where there is no gossip, meaning that you're minding your business, closing your mouth and not worried about what the next person is doing, then the contention will cease. And all of us can say that at some point we have made circumstances worse because we opened our mouths. Come on. If you're guilty, just go on and say, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I've done it. Been there, done that. And repent it. You know, sometimes you just got to apologize and say that I'm wrong, you know, and hope that you're forgiven so that you can move forward. You know, but at the end of the day, that's why it's very important for us to read the word, because the word gives us the guidance that we need uh, to watch our mouths and and to not think that we can say what we want to say, how we want to say it and think that everybody is supposed to be receptive of it. You know, so these are lessons that we learned in 2022 so that we can go into 2023 being better stewards of our words. And we all can say that we're guilty. And while y'all are on here, yes, we're having church tomorrow. So I don't know what y'all doing tonight, but make sure y'all get up and come to church. I just need to go ahead and get that out there while y'all on here. OK, so. Um, and the last point I want to give you is to just stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. If it, if it, when you drive in your car, you'll get a ticket for swerving back and forth in your lane and in somebody else's lane. They will get, yeah, you'll be in court for reckless driving. And some of us, I'm sure that God has written us a whole lot of tickets for reckless living. Recklessly running our mouth. Stay in your lane. Okay. And this is my last point right here. I, I'm bringing this thing on in. I told y'all I wouldn't be long. Ask God. So let me go ahead and reiterate first. Ask God to strip you of dead weight. Ask God to help you run your own race. And my last point, as I bring this thing in for the landing, is ask God to help you put him first. Ask God to help you to put him first. Now, anybody can get off track. All of us are guilty of getting off track and making other things more of a priority than our relationship with God. We all have been there and we have done that. But when you begin to think back over your life and you begin to analyze everything and you, you think about, you know, have I really treated God the way he's treated me? Then you have to really come to the conclusion that he's been better to me than I've been to him. And once you begin to think about this stuff and you say, man, I've treated such and such them better than I've treated God. I've called and talked to them and I ain't even prayed, you know, as, like I should pray, you know, and um, and all you can do is say, Lord, I'm guilty. 
and I'm asking for your forgiveness. And what I'm asking you to help me do in 2023, God, I'm asking you to help me put you first. I need you to help me put you first because I have a tendency to push other things in front of you because I know how patient you are and because I know you promised to never leave me or forsake me. And I, I know that you would never turn your back on me. And I know that if the world forsakes me today, you will always be by my side. And, and because we take this for granted, we pull other things closer and we push God away. We push him away because we know it's just like, with you know, somebody loves you uh, dearly. You kind of mistreat them sometimes when you when you you're really not trying to do it intentionally, but you take the relationship for granted because you think that they're going to always be there. But I need you to understand that um, people are getting tired and when people get tired, they cut you off mentally. And when a person leaves you mentally, their body is getting ready to catch up with where their mind is. And so you have to be careful with that because when you lose a person up here and right here, it won't be long before your body catches up with wherever your mind went. OK, you know, so it's, it's imperative that you ask God to help you put him first. Lord, I know that you called me to do something. I know you called me to say something whenever you tell me to speak. I know that there is something that I'm supposed to do. And I put a whole lot of things off in 2023 uh, in the name of being busy, you know, uh, but I. I wouldn't be able to do none of this stuff if you didn't wake me up every morning. I wouldn't be able to do any of this without the air that's in my lungs. I wouldn't be able to do any of this without a reasonable portion of my health and strength. So I got to keep you first because if you snap your fingers and pull the rug from under me, I'm over. Just like that. I could be here today and gone tomorrow. So let me give you the verse. Look at what Jesus said to the church in Ephesus. And the scripture is in Revelation chapter two, verses four and five. And, and I'm out. Stay with me for these last few minutes. Revelation. That's the last book in the Bible. Revelation without the S. I always like to let people know it's not revelations. It's only one revelation. And don't get scared and get off the lie because I said revelation. You know, it's not what y'all think it is. Chapter two, verses four and five. This is what Jesus says to the church, the church in Ephesus. He says, but I have this against you. At, let me go back and start at the first verse to the angel of the church in Ephesus. Right. One who holds the seven stars, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to jump on to verse two. I know your deeds and your toll and your perseverance and that you cannot tolerate evil men. And you put to the test those who call themselves apostles and they are not and you found them to be false and you have perseverance and have endurance for my name's sake and have not grown weary. This is what Jesus is telling the church in Ephesus. He said, I see what y'all are doing. I see that y'all hate evil and I see that y'all are really challenging these people who call themselves apostles and prophets and all this stuff. He says, and I see uh, I see everything that you all are doing. Uh, you have perseverance for my name's sake and you have not grown weary. He said, I see that. He says in verse four, he says, but I have this against you. OK, he says, I see the good, but I see something that I, I'm concerned about. What is he concerned about? He says uh, that you have left your first love. He says, he says, I see everything good that you're doing. He says, but you don't love me the way you used to. Whew. Come on, y'all. I know y'all felt that. If you didn't feel no other point, I know you felt this point right here. Jesus says, I see everything good that you're doing. You give, you give to the church, you give to the community, you go and you volunteer. You got a nonprofit organization. You got all this stuff going on. He says, but you don't love me the way you used to. That right there got to me. That got me. Because, you know, it's so many people going around that always want to speak down on religion, want to speak down on church. They dog every pastor, you know, and, and so many people have pushed away from. And listen, being in a church has absolutely 
nothing to do with your love for God, but because you love God, you know, he does give you the desire to go and be fed and, and hear the word, but don't get it twisted. I believe that a lot of people who don't frequent churches are going to heaven, you know, but here it is. He says, but y'all don't love me the way you used to. Y'all love y'all cars. Y'all love y'all clothes. Y'all love y'all shoes. And I'm guilty of it as well. He says, y'all love all this stuff. Y'all love social media. Y'all love your boyfriends who don't love you back. Your husband, wives who don't love you back. Y'all love all these folk. And Jesus says, I'm the only person that's ever been in your life whose love has been consistent. Nobody loves you. Like I love you, but you don't love me back. And the love is not being reciprocated. Some of y'all don't want to go to no church, don't want to hear the word, don't want to hear nothing nobody has to say anymore. And because of this, the world is becoming more and more corrupt because the people of God don't love him the way they used to. And I didn't say it. He says it in the word and he's checking a church. He's checking the church. He says, yeah, I see everything good that y'all are doing. He says, I see that. I see y'all hate false prophets and all this stuff. And if you go back, he approached seven different churches. He told them something good, but he also said, I got an issue with y'all. Y'all don't love me the way you used to. We have to put God back where he belongs in our lives and stop making excuses <laughs> for putting him on the back burner. If you, nobody can call me in 2023 and tell me they can't be somewhere and you are always somewhere. Like, I don't want to hear that. Like, I, I, whether, what, whether you do or you don't, it ain't, it don't have nothing to do to me, but, but don't, don't stop lying to people and stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to people and stop lying to yourself. You, everybody do what they want to do when they want to do it, if they want to do it. And if you want to be somewhere, you're going to make your way there regardless. You know, I've made my way to some places that I was never supposed to be and don't know how I got there during the times that I did it. But I made a way. And if I can make a way and if you can make a way to get to places that we're not even supposed to be. Come on, somebody. You got to stop making excuses. He says when you love something and when you love somebody, you will swim across. Listen. Every love song, well, the old love songs of the 90s, you know, I give you the sun, the rain, the moon, the stars and the mountain. I give you the world. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And all that you wish for and even more. Exactly. When you love somebody, you want to give them not the bare minimum. You want to give them the max and beyond. The max and beyond. And so. I've said it. I said it all. And going into 2023, Lord, I'm not making no excuses. I'm not making no excuses. I'm not going. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. If you start your year out making excuses, it's going to end in excuses. And you got to be careful how you start a thing, because how you start something will dictate the momentum of the thing that you just started. If you're going to go hard, if you're going to make some adjustments, you don't need a new year resolution. You don't have to have a resolution. Just have a changed heart and a change and a made up mind that this is how I'm doing it this year and stick with it. You know, so um, and walk it out. But uh, thank y'all for being patient with me. Um, ask God to strip you. Ask God to help you run your own race. And lastly, ask God to help you put him first. And as you do these things, your 2023 is going to be an amazing amazing year. People are going to experience healing, deliverance. Doors are going to be opened. Eyes are going to be open. Blessings are going to fall. You know, I'm talking, you know, put yourself in a, in a position 
to receive everything that God promised you. I'm not going to shift. I'm not going to move. I'm going to stand there. I'm going to be like Jacob was. Lord, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I'm not going to move. I don't care if I, I got to have a new walk, new talk. You got to dismantle something. Whatever you have to do, Lord, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. When he let Jacob, when Jacob let him finally let him go, Jacob had a new walk, a new talk and a new name. And so 2023 is going to be your year. It's going to be my year. And we're going to get rid of all these awful attachments and we're going to start making connections in 2023. I don't want no attachments. I want connections. You want to know why I want connections? I want connections because I won't be the only one given. Woo, Lord have mercy. I know y'all felt that right there. I want connections because I won't be the only one given in 2023. If I catch myself being the only one giving, then I know that that relationship got to go because you know what? I'm not going to have enough for my connections if I keep on feeding my attachments. Lord have mercy. Now it's getting good. I said I'm not going to have enough for my connections if my attachments keep on draining me. And so, listen. In 2022, attachments, y'all have had a good run. I hope you had fun. I hope you got everything that you hoped for. Because in 2023, no attachments, only connections. Well, people, well, let me pray for us. We out of here. And if you want more about connections and attachments, that's what we own in the morning. You don't want to miss it. Be there at 10 o'clock. You know, make sure you go to bed in time. Don't make no excuse. If you make an excuse, I was too tired. I couldn't get up. You already done started your year out crazy. <laughs> you already done started with the very thing we said we wasn't going to do. And that's make excuses. And so let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for every person that took the time to come into this, uh, the live message and to hear a word of encouragement, inspiration. We pray that you will bless them and everything that they touch. Bless their children, uh, bless their grandchildren, bless their families. I pray that everything they touch turns to gold. Give them the Midas touch in 2023. I pray, God, that you would uh, that you would begin to heal those who are sick in their body, those who are tired, those who have been exhausted from all of the activity in 2022. I pray that you would resuscitate, that you would revive and that you would resurrect every good thing that you possibly can in us, God. We want to give you 100% in 2023. We want to give you our all. We don't want to half step. We want to set goals and reach those goals. We want to celebrate small victories because we know that big victories are on the way. As we elevate God, I pray that you would uh, keep our pride intact and help us to not think that we are the ones who did it. But if we elevate at all, God, we give you the glory. And I pray that you would help us, Lord, to not get into any debates with anybody about the about theology and whether God is real and and whether Jesus is real. We don't have time for petty disputes because we know what we know and we stand on it. If they want to be atheists, let them be atheists. If we want to serve God, let us serve God in peace. You said that in the last days that all of these things would would happen and men and women would wax worse and worse. And we are living in the last days. So I pray that you would take the blinders off of our eyes. Let us not get caught up in the sauce. Let us not get mixed up in all of the madness to such an extent that we forget that you are still on the throne. And as long as you're on the throne, you're still in control. And we thank you. We praise you. We bless your holy name. Protect us all 2023. And we're going to show out and show up for you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. We give you all the praise, the honor and the glory. Amen. So before we go, I want you to be careful tonight. Be careful. If you leave your home, they are going to start shooting guns. Um, things are already going on. So I just want you to be safe. Uh, ask God to protect you no matter where you are. Even if you stay at home, you still need God's guidance and his protection. OK, and uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, we back in and we own. OK, those of you 
who want to sow to give, you already know that you can cash app Inner Peace Church. You can give by clicking the tab, uh, the the link that tab will put in in the comments, or you can text give to 423-301-5545. Okay. Otherwise, I need to also say this. If you don't know Jesus as personal Lord and Savior, this is the day for you to give your life to him. This is it. There's no better way to start 2023 than knowing that if you never lived another day, that your life is secure. That your life is secure in Christ, that you've given your life, you've asked him. The scripture says that whoever calls up on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls up on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised his son from the dead, you shall be saved. Simple and plain. It ain't no gimmick. It's real. I believe it and I'm going to always stand on it. Listen, I love to have fun. I laugh a lot. I engage with the people. You know, uh, I'm probably one of the <laughs> very few that is reachable, that you can, you know, you can interact with me in real life. You know, I'm really silly and fun in real life. I'm not just a preacher, you know. So in, 20, in 2023, I'm going to continue to be, uh, I'm going to continue to vibe with the people, uh, continue to love. But at the same time, I'm still going to be me, you know. So I, as in closing, let me say this. Don't ever become so high minded that you lose yourself. Don't ever lose your personality. You know, don't ever lose your personality. Let me say that one more time. Be saved. Love God, but be authentic to who he's called you to be. Be authentic. If you're a silly person, it doesn't mean you can't be silly because you're saved. I'm silly. And anybody who knows me know that I'm going to laugh. I'm going to cut up. And some people are like, man, he'll preach it. Why he be acting silly like that? It's because that's my personality. And, pre and when God called me to preach, he didn't remove my personality. I'm still a fun person. I like to bold. I like to laugh. I like to joke. And you know what? If I wasn't a pastor, I could probably be a real comedian. Ask my family. You know, and because I, I'm really like that, you know, so um, but I love you all and I appreciate all the positive things uh, that you all have commented over the years. Those of you who have supported and, and have taken the time to actually listen to some of the things that that we share, uh, you know, on our lives. Uh, I thank God for inner peace. Uh, man, I just I thank God for my wife. I thank God for. Uh, my family and friends. I thank God for for all of you. You know, um, I just don't don't have words because I'm telling you, every person needs a circle of people that they can depend on, rely on, and that you can actually. Um, you don't always have to be in your divinity. You can actually be in your humanity around them, if that makes sense to you. Sometimes you just need to be human. You know, you need to be human just for a moment. You need to watch a football game. And and if your team is losing, uh, you, you ought to have a right to pout and to throw something across the room and and to jump up and scream and all that stuff. You know, that's being human. And some people think that you can only be one thing. And that is if God called you to preach, all you should do is preach. no. If God calls you to be saved, all you could do is go to church and carry the Bible. And every time we turn around, you got to be reading this. I love the word and I love the Lord. But I also like to laugh because if I did not have the ability to laugh and if I never got a chance to do that, I would have one of the most miserable lives on earth. Because doing this right here and being in my shoes, you have to have. An outlet. You have to be able to tap into the fact that, hey, I'm human too. You know, I can go bowling. I can like cars. Or I can have hobbies and like shoes. And you know, I can dance. And by the way, I'm not. I'm never going to stop dancing. I'm never going to stop dancing. Some people are like he always dancing. He be out there dancing. And when I'm dancing, I'm with my family. And when I'm with my family. I just let my hair down and I have a good time. And that's what keeps me sane. 
you have no idea of what being able to dance. And I can't even really dance. I just want to move. I just want to move a little bit and just just pinch myself and know that I'm human. That's all. The Bible says that when David danced, he danced out of his clothes. The man was dead, although he was praising God because they had just brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem, you know, but he still danced, you know. And if you read Psalm 150, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise him dancing and all that stuff is just part of religion. But uh, at the end of the day, um, I hope that everyone has an amazing new year. And I hope that this year you are able to do some of the things that you were never able to do in 2022. And I pray that everything that you have lost, that you recover. And I pray that um, that this year you live your best life. Stop saying in, in a couple of years, I'm going to live a couple of years is not promised. You need to live your best life this year because the next moment is never promised to you. You know, so I ain't waiting on nothing. Everything that God promised me, I want it. I want it. So uh, I love y'all. And if there's ever anything that we can do, I got a wedding to do tomorrow after service, you know, on the bridge. And I'm excited about doing my first wedding uh, tomorrow. And so um, anyway, I love you all. If there's ever anything that we can do for you uh, to assist you, um, if we are available, we're going to make it happen, you know, but uh, stay safe. And uh, stay out the way and have a happy, happy new year. I love you all. Bye.